Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snailus, where medicine makes perfect sense. We continue our physiology playlist. In the previous video, we have talked about osmosis and the osmotic pressure. Today, we'll compare between osmolality and osmolarity. We'll also compare between osmolality and tonicity. Moreover, we will compare between calculated osmolality and measured osmolality. So, let's get started. We will do this very quickly because we have discussed this before in my physiology playlist. Cell membrane transport is a passive or active. Passive includes osmosis, which means we need no ATP. We need no carrier. Osmosis is the simple diffusion of water or the movement of water from low concentration of solute to high concentration of solutes. What is a mole? It's a molecular weight in grams. What's a millimole? Same thing, it's just smaller than the mole. How about the osmole? This is osmolality caused by a mole. The mole could be of glucose or of chloride. The difference is glucose is non-ionizable, chloride is ionizable. When it comes to osmotic pressure, we care about the number of molecules, not the mass, not the size, the number. And that's why sodium is the hero, because sodium is everywhere. The osmotic pressure is proportional to the number of particles, the number over the volume of the liquid. And that's why the measuring unit is milliosmoles, which is the number of particles per liter, the volume. This is what? Osmolality. So how about osmolarity? Osmolarity is per liter. So osmolality is per kilogram, but osmolarity is per liter. So osmolality, milliosmoles per kilogram. Osmolarity per liter. This mnemonic works for the British and for Americans. Which one is more accurate, osmolality or osmolarity? Osmolality is more accurate because the weight does not change. If I take 100 cc of water and then if I heat them, the volume will expand, but the weight will not change. And that's why the one that has per kilogram, which is osmolality, is more accurate. Which one is more practical? It's osmolarity. It's per liter. Why is it practical? Is it easier for you to obtain 100 cc's from the patient's blood or 100 grams of the patient's blood? Of course, the volume is easier, so the osmolarity is more practical. You just look at the graduated cylinder and it will tell you per liter. Osmolality, milliosmoles per kilogram. Osmolarity, milliosmoles per liter. Which one is more accurate? Osmolality. Which one is more practical? Osmolarity. For clinical purpose, we don't care. It really doesn't matter. You can say osmolality or osmolarity. We don't give a rip. So if I say that the normal plasma osmolality is 290 milliosmoles per liter, a student will object and say, hey, medicos, this is not the osmolality. This is the osmolarity because per liter. Clinically, we don't care. You can use them interchangeably. The only people who care are those bored people that we call physiology professors. And that's why we never let them near patients. Clinical take-home points, we couldn't care less about the difference between osmolality versus osmolarity. Okay, medicosis, now I get osmolality and osmolarity, which is per liter. Okay, what's the difference between measured osmolality and calculated osmolality? Okay, measured is measured. You just send it to the lab and a stupid machine called the osmometer is going to measure how many osmoles are in the plasma. Sodium, glucose, chloride, calcium, etc. However, the calculated osmolality of the plasma, you cannot do this using a stupid machine. You need to rely on your brain using this amazing equation. 2 times sodium plus glucose over 18 plus BUN over 2.8. To make it easier, you can say glucose over 20 and BUN over 3. Normally, measured osmolality should equal calculated osmolality, and they should equal 290 milliosmoles per liter. A student may observe and say, Hey, medicosis, don't say that this is osmolality. How dare you? This is osmolarity. Shut up. It doesn't matter. And of course, normally, osmolality of the interstitium has to equal the osmolality of the plasma, has to equal the osmolality of the intracellular fluid. Otherwise, one of these compartments will swell and burst until you die. So, normally measured osmolality should equal calculated osmolality. What if they are not equal? This is called the osmolar gap. Normally the gap should be less than 10. So, for instance, if the measured osmolarity is 290, but the calculated osmolarity is about, let's say, 285, it's okay, that's normal. But if the difference is huge, Houston, we have a problem. We have been invaded by foreign invaders, foreign osmols such as mannitol, 
ethanol, etc. Okay, medicosis. So, osmolality per kilogram, osmolarity per liter. We get it. Next, measured versus calculated. Measured is in the lab by the stupid osmometer. Calculated is using the beautiful equation 2 times sodium plus glucose over 18 plus BUN over 2.8. Perfect. Now, what is the third difference, which is between osmolality and tonicity? The textbook will say it like this. Osmolality is the total number of osmols in a volume of water, but tonicity is the ability of combined effect of all of the solids to generate an osmotic driving force that causes water movement. Did you understand anything? Of course not. That's why you're watching. So, let's make it simple. Osmolality is easy. Get a sample of the blood, send it to the lab. This stupid osmometer is gonna measure all the sodium, the glucose, the cal, etc. in the blood and will give you a number. For example, 290 milliosmoles per liter. Cool. What is the tonicity? The tonicity relies not on all the osmoles like the stupid osmometer, but only on the effective osmoles, which include sodium, but they do not include urea. Moreover, tonicity describes osmolality of a solution relative to plasma. So, if I have the same osmolality as your plasma, I'm called an isotonic solution. Lower than your plasma, I'm called a hypotonic solution. Higher than your plasma, I'm called a hypertonic solution. What's the normal plasma osmolality? From 275 to 295 milliosmoles per liter. If you want to say 300, it's okay. Remember when we did this exercise in the previous video, what we were trying to calculate here, the osmolality, for instance, sodium plus chloride, two, so two osmoles per liter. How about this one? One mole of glucose is just one, but in half a liter, so you multiply by two. So this is two. What is this? Is this tonicity or, osm or osmolality? This is osmolality because you're counting everything, but tonicity will only care about the effective osmoles, not all the osmoles. So, osmolality counts every osmol. How about tonicity? Only the effective osmol. So, let me ask you this. Is sodium effective? Yes. Is glucose effective? You betcha. Is urea effective? No. Urea is BS. No pun intended. Literally BS. It's not an effective osmol, and therefore it has nothing to do with tonicity. Let me ask you a very smart question. Hey, big boy, give me a condition that will raise your plasma osmolality without affecting your plasma tonicity. Anything that has high urea, such as kidney failure. I increase my plasma osmolality, the tonicity does not change. But please be very careful because kidney failure can mess up with other electrolytes, such as sodium, glucose, etc. These are effective osmols, so let's just think. Hypertonicity, my osmolality is greater than the normal. Hypotonicity, my osmolality is lower than the normal. Normal tonicity, my osmolality is the same as the plasma. Okay, and that's why we have three types of solution. Normal tonic solutions or isotonic solutions, hypotonic solutions, and hypertonic solutions. Okay, doctor, now imagine that you are in a freaking ambulance with a patient who has just been in a car accident and lost two liters of blood. What should you give the patient? Oh, I should give the patient blood. There is no blood in the ambulance. There is just fluids. Would you give isotonic fluid, hypotonic fluid, or hypertonic fluid? Okay, since the patient lost blood with osmolality of 290, I should give the patient what he lost, an isotonic fluid, known as normal saline. What are the effective osmols? These are confined to one compartment, to the ECF. They cannot cross through the lipid membrane. They stay within one compartment and exert an osmotic pressure. That's why they are effective. Examples. Normally, in you and I, we have sodium and glucose. Or, if we are intoxicated, could be bisorbital, mannitol, ethanol, etc. Don't forget that urea is ineffective. It can affect your osmolality, but not your tonicity. Urea is BS. If I have hypertonicity, my body will respond by making me thirsty and by increasing ADH, which will reabsorb water in the kidney, trying to bring the hypertonicity down and back to normal. 
So calculated osmolality, 2 times sodium plus glucose over 20 plus BUN over 3. Have you noticed we have urea here? Yeah, because this is osmolality. But when it comes to tonicity, urea is ineffective. Urea cannot cause cell swelling or cell shrinking. Why? Because it can freely pass throughout the membrane like it's dead gum nothing. It neither stays in one compartment nor it exerts osmotic pressure. Okay, what can cause hyperosmolality according to this equation? Lots of sodium called hypernatremia, lots of glucose called hyperglycemia, lots of BUN called kidney failure. So what's going to happen if I have hypertonicity? The cell is going to shrink because water is going to leave because this is hypertonic. How about hypotonic? The opposite. The cell is going to swell. If this cell happens to be your brain, in either way, you will suffer from mental status abnormalities. Therefore, the tonicity determines the cell hydration, which determines the cell size, which, if it's in the brain, will determine your mental status. To learn more about this, I have a free source and a premium source. Free source you'll find on my YouTube channel under a playlist known as Fluids, Electrolytes and Acid-Based Disturbance. A premium course, if you go to my website, it's the Electrolytes course. 19 videos, baby, about sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, chloride, phosphate, hypernatremia, hyponatremia, etc. Just go to medicosisperfectionalis.com. Thank you for watching, subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button, you can support me here or here, go to my website to get my electrolytes course and my antibiotics course. Thank you for watching, as always, be safe, stay happy and study hard, this is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.